All right, coming up next, it's a lightweight bout between Charles Dubronx Oliveira and Jorge Gamebred Masvidal. All right, here he is, Jorge Gamebred Masvidal, longtime representative of American Top Team. You know how happy it would make Dan Lambert if Masvidal could finally break through and win a UFC championship. He's as close to that level as he's been in his UFC career. As he's ever been. He's finally on the cusp of earning what so many people have hoped for for him. But that doesn't happen by accident. The reason he's this close now is because of the commitment that he has made to mixed martial arts. Commitment that he has made to evolving his game, going up to 170 pounds, and also using everything that he has in order to get to where he wants to be. Before, there might have been distractions. Now, Jorge Masvidal is solely focused on becoming a UFC champion. Left his family to go compete in a reality show outside of the United and States. Gave him, a, yeah, <laughs> gave him a lot of focus and direction, and he has put all of that to good use here in the UFC. All right, well, he's one of the more accomplished Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioners in this division, DC, and I know how many chokes you have in your arsenal. Offensive jiu-jitsu, defensive jiu-jitsu doesn't get much better than this guy. It doesn't get as high level in terms of jiu-jitsu knowledge. He knows in every exchange that he's the guy that's processing things at a different level, from the armbar submissions that he has shown in the octagon to the beautiful guillotine chokes that he does over and over again. And don't think that he won't roll for a knee bar and get a submission. Right. It's just constant danger when you're in the jiu-jitsu with this guy. And even the high-level wrestlers that he's fought have paused to try to take him down because of that patented guillotine. It's so truly a case of pick your poison with this Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner. And now our tale of the tape for this lightweight fight. Oliveira is 30, Masvidal is 35. The rest is roughly identical. Here is Ladies Chris and Parker. gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. When the action begins, our referee in charge of the octagon, Eve Levine. And now, this is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas. It's time! Five rounds in the UFC lightweight division. If you just fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a boxer holding a professional record of 35 wins, 16 losses. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall, weighing in at 155 pounds. Fighting out of Miami, Florida, Jorge Game Red Masvidal. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a jiu-jitsu fighter, holding a professional record of 33 wins, 9 losses, and 1 no contest. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall, weighing in at 155 pounds. Fighting out of Sao Paulo, Brazil, Charles de Bronx Oliveira! Okay, could take yourself at all time, will be my command at all time. If you want to touch love, do it now, go back to your point. And with that touch of the gloves, we are underway. All right, so here we go with round one, and when you are facing a submission specialist like this as a striker, you have got to avoid the canvas, I would think, at all. Yes, you have to. And if the striker gets taken down, he needs to make sure the only thought is to get back to his feet. Quick. Whether the submissionist goes to his back or is on top, you've got to make plan number one, getting back in and getting back to your space. If not, you're going to find yourself tapping and really wonder why. Why did I not engage him in this game? Look at you dropping a submission. Ah, huh? uh, it's crazy. 
Well, perhaps a sign of things to come as he lands a kick there. Nice kick landed by the jump. Ooh, blocks the shot. Trying to establish that jab once again. Well, he told us on Thursday, you don't get paid to fight 15 minutes. To that end, early takedown is there. His ideal fight is a... And now he has a headlock trying to pin his opponent's back down flat onto the mat. Look for him to transition to an arm triangle to try to chase the finish. Watch triangle, watch triangle. There he is, he's moving to the finisher position. Now watch, he goes parallel right next to his opponent. When it's time to finish, he has to go. Oh, he might have got him with a choke. Wow. All right, right into side control. Upper body strength figures to be put to good use here. Yes, absolutely. And you got to look for his opponent to turn back into him. He should chase guillotine, but the opponent turns to the opposite side. He can take his back, throw his hooks in, try to choke, or flatten him out. Just go for the finish. Just over three minutes now to go in round one. Oh, man. This ground and pound is good. Probably my favorite striking realm in MMA, and he's as good as it gets. The problem is his opponent is not controlling his posture. He's allowing his opponent to get up, and when he does, creates this space to land these beautiful ground and pound combinations. Oh, and he escapes up to his feet. Very nice. Oh, huge leg kick to that lead leg. Both guys landing big shots. So just over 20 total strikes have landed for Charles Oliveira. Sound defensively here as he stays upright. Double leg takedown, no good. Big knee land right through the pole of midsection. Well, missed on that one. Minutes remain in the round. Well, for years, Tyler Woodley had said Jorge Masvidal is the best boxer on this UFC roster. Certainly showed you the hands there. I mean, he's showing it, man. I mean, this, I mean, he's showing it, John. This guy has an ability to stand and box with anyone in the UFC. And that was a full display when he beat Nate Diaz. Punch over the top. Nice body kick. Yeah, he's mixing it all up. Oh, and he defends another takedown there, so it looked like a pretty good entry, but once again, unable to get him back. Great balance, great awareness. Moved the head back to side, turned that double into a single, sprawled, and got away from his opponent. Great job. All right, so he lands a jab there. Pretty nicely done, DC. You can really control a fight just knowing how to fight behind your jab. All right, he engages in the single collar tie. Huge knee land. Both fighters here continuing to try to get a more dominant position in the clinch, getting fatigued in the process, I would think. It's very taxing to beat chest to chest, a position we call 50-50 because nobody has the advantage. Who's going to be the one to find that one little area that they can expose to give them the slightest advantage? And both fighters exchange in the pocket. 30 seconds now to go in round one. And he caught the kick. Oh, left hook to the head, it's blocked. Oh, that's a beautiful kick right there. I don't know if you've ever been kicked by a mule. It probably feels something like that. It has to. This guy is landing this kick with so much force. Oh, there we go. Oliveira's looking to pass out of the half guard here and get that side control. What a round it was, especially from a striking standpoint. DC, take us through. High-level striking. I mean, this is what people come through the doors to see. Two men stand on a quarter, chest to chest, forehead to forehead, and let it all fly. I'm surprised nobody went out, but it does excite me for the next round.
All right, DC, second round is getting underway. Round one, not the round of the year necessarily, but some good in there. And it's not always going to be. When you have two very talented fighters, sometimes it's very even. That's what we saw. Big punch lands in the middle. Well-placed kick there by Jorge Gamebred Masvidal. Oliveira gets tattooed by that straight punch. Stuffs that takedown attempt without issue. Oh, good opportunity to do damage here. He's got that tight clinch. That was just a nice strike. Oh, Masvidal in a real flow here, sticking and moving. Crowd is like just reacting every time he moves. Masvidal now has the crowd cleaning out of his hands. The one thing about Jorge that makes him so difficult to deal with is he never allows him to trap him. When you think he's got to trap to try to hit the four takedown, he evades and escapes. He's a phenomenal fighter. Well, these numbers are unofficial, but they are strong. 73 total strikes have now landed for Jorge Masvidal. Well, still connecting on about four of every 10 attempts. 40% the accuracy right now against Charles Duke Bronx Oliver. Well, he continues to do a nice job here defensively protecting the head and sort of maybe letting his opponent gas out. Whoa! Oh, he's hurt bad. He's hurt bad, John. He's got to press him. He's got to go chase that finish down now. He ate that kick. He took that whole kick, yep. Now goes in and secures the takedown. Postured up there, gained some valuable separation. And now, the ground and pound start. Now he's attacking the triangle. Triangle looks pretty tight, DC. I'm no Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, but maybe not good here. No, it looks like it's getting in deep. Watch triangle, watch triangle. He's to push the arm to the side. Get his head against the mat. Now watch, as he goes to the finish, watch his chest go to the mat. He goes, and this might just be a matter of time. It's nicely done. Well, pretty good work off of the bottom here by Gabriel. All right, well, both fighters pretty comfortable on the ground, DC, but you got to be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. Oliveris right back to the full mount. Pretty good ground and pound by him here. He told us on Thursday he needed to be more effective in these situations. Certainly effective tonight. Many people have gone away from this style of fighting. This man has embraced it. And you are seeing why he's one of the best that we've seen do it in a long time. Just over two minutes to go in the round. Oh, that right hand is on point. He continues to apply pressure here in half guard. Good work from the top here by Oliver. He's putting him in exactly the positions he needs to be in right now. He's able to relax here. And he understands, being a veteran of so many fights, that as long as he's on top, he's winning. He feels like he's winning here. He's a tech armbar now. Oh, we're getting a finish here. This might just be a matter of time. Brilliant submission defense there. One minute to go in the round. Well, not ideal to spend this much time on the bottom, but you can't fault him for his activity. Landing strikes here from the bottom. Nice work by Oliveira. All right, well, he continues to manhandle him here on the ground. Now maybe trying to get to a choke position here, DC. Back to the feet now. Starting to do some really significant damage. Oh! Stu's hurt. Serve him up. Go get him. Oh, he might be out. Oh! Powerful leg kick land. Nice loop of punch. Thank you.
the ground. All right, let's now look back at some of the action from that round. He went headhunting, landed, nearly got the finish, too. A lot of coaches tell you don't headhunt. In this case, he's been headhunting, and he landed a big enough shot to truly put his opponent on notice. All right, next round is now underway. Ready? I thought there was pretty good back Ready? and forth action in the previous fight. Yes, it wasn't a far fight. It wasn't two guys going to kick the sink at each other. But you did see times when it came together and you saw the skill level of these two fighters. Oh, tripling up on the jab. Well played. Man, it's almost like he's got a range finder out there. Just too easy as he connects with another good series of punches. If you're boxing this guy, and only boxing if you will be in trouble. Landed another great shot to the body. They're really starting to connect at a high percentage now in the latter stages of this fight. Oliveira doing the right things defensively. Oliveira gets caught with that punch. Wow! What a fantastic strike to throw at the exact right moment. He deserves this moment. Go finish this fight. He's in trouble. He's getting lit up. Mixes it up nicely in terms of staying heavy and also staying active. Can't take many of those. You better check. All oh, working hard here against the fence. We'll see if he can get the takedown. So he's really starting to put together some significant body shots here. These are going to take their toll as this fight goes on. Looks like it did stun him a little bit. Oh! Sweet! Looking for a guillotine. Watch guillotine! Grab the wrist! Grab his wrist! He might get a finish here! Oh, looks like he's countering here with maybe a Von Flu. He's got the side mount, and now all of a sudden his opponent's in trouble. May want to bail on that guillotine sooner rather than later. He got it. He got it, John. Oh, he got it done, absolutely. He finishes his opponent by way of submission. Play as he gets it done by submission tonight, champ. He does a great job of staying patient. He doesn't rush or panic. You are never safe when you're fighting this guy. You're in a lot of trouble. You're in a lot of trouble the entire time when you're this good in the submission. So there he is, your winner by submission tonight, and that is how you put the rest of the division on notice. A huge result for him here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Eve Wabing has called a stop to this contest at 2 minutes, 16 seconds of the third round. For the winner by submission, Jorge Gabriel So what a performance by this young man here tonight as he gets the win by way of submission. He certainly put a lot of stock into getting the finish tonight, and he did just that. Congratulations. It was a very tough fight, but he knew that if he did everything right, he can get to his position, which is the ground, and he would be able to find a finish by submission tonight. He did just that.